Nobody here has any sympathy for domestic abusers, victims of violence and mistreatment at the hands of their own spouse, family member, deserve whatever help they can get. Nobody deserves to live with that kind of pain. But we have doubts about Nicole Doucette of Nova Scotia, caught in a sting operation by the Mounties, attempting to hire a hitman to kill her husband, Michael Ryan. And her interaction with the undercover cop was all caught on camera. I need the job done. No. Need it done this weekend. And you just want to black. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, I'm just saying, in my business, sometimes people, my yeah. message just said, sometimes they want certain things done no. to the body, right? But in this case, right, you just want to black. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, if you don't mind me asking, is there any reason, like, is he f***ing around? Was he f***ing around on you, or? Oh, yes, but that's, he's always done that. Has he? Yeah. That is, that was a big deal. No? So you're officially married, but you're still married to him? Yeah. Oh, so this might work out very good for you. Mm -hmm. Something would have happened to him. Huh? Be a bit of a tragedy. It would. <laughs> any beatings? Like, any beat you or anything? Ever laid a hand on you? No. No. The video evidence is undeniable, but was she convicted of conspiracy to commit murder? Not even close. She gave the battered woman defense and Nova Scotia Supreme Court Justice David Farrar ate it up, acquitted her on the premise that she had no other option. She said she feared her abusive husband, that controlling Michael Ryan abused her, apparently pointing a gun at her head on several occasions and regularly uttering threats. But without any real evidence, her claims have never been substantiated. Yet the judge took her for her word just her word, declaring that any reasonable person would have done the same. The case went all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada, which struck down the acquittal and, in an unusual move, ordered a stay of proceedings, meaning Ms. Doucette can't be tried again. Throughout all this, Michael Ryan was never given a chance to give his side of the story because the Crown and the Supreme Court felt it wasn't necessary. Again, video evidence of her attempting to hire a killer in the video, she even seems fine with Michael Ryan's girlfriend getting killed as collateral damage, stacking up against her unsubstantiated claims of abuse. Does any of this seem reasonable to you? For more, let's go to crime specialist Ross McLean in Toronto. Okay, uh, Ross, we, we got a, a hornet's nest here. Uh, the judge, I presume, got to see that the same videotape that our viewers saw tonight. Uh, yes, but uh, you're absolutely right in the way you framed up this, this trial and how it turned, turned out, Charles. But there's a lot that we don't know that doesn't make sense in this. And I know that some people have called for an inquiry into how this whole case was handled. And I think that's probably a good idea, Charles. Okay, so uh, a judge in today's Canada does not require evidence, right? On, on certain cases, evidence is not necessary. Uh, somebody gives her, somebody, somebody who stands um, accused of a heinous crime and could go away for a long time, who has all the incentive in the world to tell a tale, to spin a yarn, uh, spins one, and the judge says, well, I mean, this is, this is much too serious for me to look uh, any further. I've just got to take her word. I mean, that, that, that to, to the ordinary Canadian viewer, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, there's something that's strange about this one right from the start, and it's where we really need to look at the oversight of the courts. And the law, of course, works in strange ways. Let me tell you a few things that I see are troubling with this, uh, Charles. Number one, the first out investigation of what the domestic abuse either was or wasn't. There was no mention of that throughout the trial by the RCMP. There was no mention of that by the Crown Attorney. They had the husband, who supposedly she accused of abusing, but he says now he never touched her, waiting to testify, but they never called him to testify. So that sends off a, a red flag to me, Charles that the reason why you don't call a witness who can support your case is because really they're not going to be able to support your case. There may be some issues there. So I think the RCMP has to answer for how they investigated properly or didn't investigate properly the domestic abuse. This was a working soldier, so he's, there is sometimes trouble between the police and the armed forces with how they do that. And the Crown didn't call him as a witness. So the judge only has to work with what's presented before him. So it, it, it makes for a, 
bad cases make for bad law. And there is just so many poor decisions in this. Uh, it baffles me. Okay, I want to get to the Supreme Court in just a second, but I just want you to focus uh, for a moment because you, you skipped over something relatively quickly. And I think the public needs to, to hear this really, really fleshed out. When you don't have anybody to corroborate your testimony, you have one or two people who may be able to corroborate it. Your lawyer doesn't call them as witnesses. Why doesn't the lawyer put them on the stand? The lawyer typically wouldn't do it. Well, either because they're, they're foolish in the way they're doing it, or they're trying to protect something. Because once you put that witness up, they're open to be exposed for any lies they may have told or misdeeds or some such thing. But the way the law works, if the Crown makes what's called a prima facie case, meaning they give enough evidence that without any rebuttal evidence, you could be convicted, and there is no rebuttal evidence, you'll get convicted. So somewhere something was missing in the way that the Crown brought this case forward. But I'm always suspicious when there's no witness to corroborate, or there may be, but the lawyer is choosing not to put them on, because most of the time, it seems to me, based on my own experience, that happens because they don't believe that witness could withstand withering cross-examination from the other lawyer. And either the character of the witness is destroyed or the facts become less than the facts. Correct. So that's where we're sitting because we don't have the evidence as to what happened. So, you know, we saw this as well out on the East Coast there with the Retea Parsons case where there was questions about how the initial investigations were done. We're seeing it in Toronto with the Laura Babcock who's missing and perhaps a homicide victim of Della Millard where there might have been a poor primary investigation to put all the evidence there. So we need to have good primary investigations, but these crowns have to do a better job of being more accountable. If they have a good case to put forward, they put it forward. If they don't, why are they putting it forward? Or, or, or what's the, the comeback to deal with the Crown who mishandles a case? Let me tell you, I've been in courts lots of times. You don't often find justice in courts. You find a legal system. It's not always fair to the participants, as her husband found out. Ross, I need, uh, I need 30 seconds here because I still have to deal with the Supreme Court. So would you give me 30 seconds on... Uh, explaining how the Supreme Court uh, behaved. The Supreme Court totally punted on this one. They decided to make no decision because they didn't want to go in and clarify this. Uh, quite quickly, they used a uh, defense called duress. That's where someone else puts a gun to your son's head and says, go rob a bank, which was the improper defense. They weren't allowed to use it. The, the court somehow accepted it, even though it's a totally improper defense. And the the Supreme Court said, well, let's just not try this anymore. Let's let it go. Almost like they didn't want it to be investigated again. Something is strange about how this one was wrapped up, Charles. Ross McLean, thanks very much for your help. As always. Tough case. Appreciate it very much. Ross McLean, crime specialist for Sun News Network.